I was guarding the HSBC building in downtown Vancouver on the afternoon shift. A call had just come in over the phone from the high rise. A lawyer was possibly having a heart attack. I grabbed the AED and radioed for paramedics before jumping into the elevator and heading up. When I got there, the lawyer, we'll call him Tom, was laying on the floor clutching his chest and looking very ashen. His skin was clammy, he was breathing heavily and was complaining of agonising chest pains. I shooed away his co-workers and stayed with him until the paramedics arrived. At this point, he seemed to be slipping in and out of consciousness. And as I was readying the AED in case it was needed, the paramedics burst in, out of the elevator and began doing their thing. They had a much better defibrillator, of course, so I got the hell out of the way and began taking down names and times. Tom was conscious again and he was begging the paramedics to help him. He didn't want to die. He didn't have a will set up. He needed to call his ex-wife, etc. Suddenly, Tom looked up towards the ceiling over the medic's shoulder. His face, already pale, whitened even further. He tried to scoot backwards on his butt, but the medics held him there, telling him to calm down. He paid them no attention, as if they weren't even there, and screamed, I don't believe it! No! No! And then he made a heavy sigh noise, and then flatlined. They weren't able to bring him back. We never knew what he saw. It's quite creepy to this day. I work in a high-rise in downtown Vancouver, and a pretty new one at that. It was built where an old office tower used to stand, and now houses well-off residents. I was approached yesterday night by a lady who seemed quite at the end of her rope. She had just moved in on Friday afternoon and complained of a woman who was trying to get into her condo. The new resident was alone Friday night, trying to unpack her bedroom boxes when the front door began banging in the frame. She called out and it stopped. Later on the same night, this time close to midnight, her front door knob began to rattle. She yelled again and called the night guard, but no one was found in the area. Saturday night, same thing, rattling door knob, door banging in the frame. So yesterday, I went upstairs with this woman to check the area and her apartment. Everything checked out. As I was leaving her suite, however, I almost ran headlong into an old grey hair woman who was standing inches from the door. As any red-blooded Canadian would do, I jumped back like a scared little girl. The old woman stood her ground, looking between myself and the new resident. Can I help you? I asked, regaining my composure and straightening my tie. No, the woman asked flatly. I'm just waiting for my elevator. And as if on cue, the elevator dinged and opened, and she got inside. I attempted to follow, but... It was too late and the door slammed in my face. I asked the resident to come downstairs with me to review some CCTV footage. I honestly thought that this would be a family member of the previous owner who had still got her building pass card and was confused and lost her way. The new resident and I rewound the footage on the tape and sat back to watch. When it got to the part where I opened the door, it appeared that I jumped back at nothing. The hallway was empty. I've always been a night owl. I have never been able to fall asleep easily. So I have a tendency to read, surf the internet, or occasionally just pace around the house. I also grew up on a farm, so on nights when the moon was light enough, I would go for walks in the pasture if I was feeling especially restless. This was definitely one of those nights. I pulled on a pair of jeans and some shoes, figuring a walk would help me to relax. Stepping out into the porch, some movement near the barn caught my eye. In the light, I could make out the figure of a man carrying something. The sound of the door opening must have alerted him because he started coming towards me. The distance from our porch to the stock barn is about 25 yards, so it wasn't a terribly large distance, and even in the dim light, I was able to realise the man had a gun. My heart racing, I backed into the house and deadbolted the door. Living in a small, rural, East Texas town, the door had always been unlocked before. Terrified... I stumbled into my parents' room and woke my father. I told him I'd seen a man with a gun in our backyard. He quickly grabbed his shotgun and told my mum to call the cops. Since we lived so far out, it would be 20 or so minutes before the police would make it here, so Dad and I went to check the animals. When we stepped outside, it was dead quiet. There was no sign of anyone in our yard, so we walked briskly towards the barn where I'd seen the man. 
We had, at the time, a few cattle, goats, a bad-tempered donkey and about half a dozen chickens and my mangy old cat. None of them were to be seen. The barn was completely empty. They slept close by and the goats weren't penned in at night, but they always slept inside the barn. Something had spooked them out of their sleep, but there was no sign of anyone. We did a quick sweep of the area and found that someone had tried to force open the door to the attached tool shed, but otherwise nothing was really missing. After searching for a while and finding nothing, we gave up and hung out in the barn waiting for the cops to arrive. The electricity ran into the barn near a, a small enclosed chicken coop and my dad kept a f- small fridge out there with a padlock on it. He opened it up and produced two beers while we waited. The cops came and we searched again, finding footprints and the cracked door frame of the shed where the guy had tried to enter, but no real damage. After the cops left, we finished our beers leaning it against the chicken coop and eventually went to bed thinking that we'd spooked the guy and he'd just left. We had spooked the guy, but apparently wasn't able to find a way off of the property. In the morning, we went out to collect the eggs and we had a horrible surprise. Of all the places we looked, we'd never thought to check inside the chicken coop, which was a pretty large area. Apparently, whoever this guy was decided to hide out in there when we came outside. Every one of our chickens had been killed. We assumed to keep them quiet. While we were leaning against the chicken coop, relaxing and drinking our beers, this guy had been inside, killing our chickens the entire time. When I was a kid, I used to go to my uncle's lodge in the school holidays. It was on this huge property that backed onto the edge of bushland, so my brother and I always had a whole bunch of stuff to do to keep us occupied. I remember I was with my dog one day playing near an empty creek, when he suddenly just took off into the trees. Everyone else had gone into town and my dad was asleep inside so I was pretty much alone and decided to go after him. He was much quicker than I was and I got lost pretty quickly. I started getting upset a little bit because I couldn't find my dog and I had no idea where I was so I turned around from where I thought I came from and tried running back to get my dad so he could try and help me find him. From what I remember I tripped over a tree root or something and fell down this embankment. I must have hit my head on something because I woke up in the bottom of this small gully not knowing how I got there. Everything was a bit fuzzy. What actually woke me up was my dog licking my face. He was lying down right next to me. How he found me I don't know but I was really happy to see him. But then he started barking. But it was a bark that I hadn't really heard him do before. And he was still lying flat on his stomach. That's the strange thing I remember about that part. A really strange lying down, grumble sort of bark. It made me scared a little bit. I turned to see what he was looking at, and there was a guy standing behind him. I remember he had this really faded cowboy hat thing on that had a big chunk missing outside. Hey kid, you had a pretty bad fall, but you should be alright. Let me get you back home, he said in this really, really deep voice. Then he walked over to me, picked me up, grabbed my hand, and we started walking back through the bush. The two things I remember from that walk were holding his gloves which I thought was really weird at the time because in the middle of the summer, it was really hot. The other thing was my dog was walking so close to me, I kept pretty much tripping the whole way back because he was smacking into the side of my leg. The guy didn't say anything though. In fact, I don't remember him actually saying anything apart from the first time he spoke. I don't think we walked for that long because we reached the creek really quickly and I could hear my name being called for my dinner by my dad. I started to run up to the house, but then I remembered I forgot to say thank you to the guy. So I turned to yell, thanks, mister, but he was already gone. I just figured he was in a hurry or something. A few days later, I was in the supermarket with my mum. It was one of those small country town ones that kind of sell everything and everyone knows everyone there. So I'm just kind of wandering around. And then there's this big photo up on the wall of this guy in the cowboy hat with a big chunk missing in the side. It was the guy who helped me in the woods. I wanted to thank him or something for helping me. So before I knew it, I was asking the person who was working who the guy was. Turns out he was the original store owner about 30 years ago, but died in a freak accident in the woods where my dog and I had apparently found him. Apparently back in the day, he used to grow vegetables for the store himself, right in the middle of those woods where we were. He went one day to see how they were growing when a really bad storm started up. Apparently, he was trying to get back, but his dog, who always went with him, fell down a really steep embankment into a small gully. So this guy went after it. While he was down there, a branch broke off the tree and hit him, breaking his back. 
They didn't find him till weeks later. His dog was also found with him, by his side. It died of starvation. That's how I found out about Mr. Rogerson, anyway. My dad was driving my brother and I down our back road near our house during the daytime. There was an insane rainstorm that was about the absolute worst I'd ever seen in a very long time. A bit of hail going on as well. Up ahead, during the worst of this rainstorm, I could see a person in a yellow rain slicker, walking really slow with his head looking down. Couldn't see his face. He had the hood tipped down just enough to be a creepy faceless weirdo. We're approaching on the right side of the road and he is walking in the opposite direction on the same side. About 30 yards before we're going to pass him, he stops. We approach going about 30 mile an hour and suddenly, as we're about to pass him, he sidesteps into the road right at the fucking car. My dad swerves slightly, nothing out of his control, but, but he was about one foot from clipping the side view. We just keep driving and look back and the fellow just keeps walking after that. None of us could believe it, it was just so surreal. I'd like to tell you a story about Claudius. Claudius lives in my house, but he's not alive. He's not evil either. He's actually quite nice. We're pretty sure he lives in the little attic above my bedroom. Sometimes he turns on the TV, always to the cooking channel. He bangs around the kitchen at night, probably trying to cook. I bet he was a chef. He moves my books around too. I keep them in a specific order, and when I wake up sometimes, they'll be completely out of order. Occasionally, he moves other things. He hid my ex's cell phone in a vent once. <laughs> other times, he helped me find things. I'll be searching for something in my room, all but give up on finding it, and it on my bed. Once, it was hot as hell, and I hadn't got air conditioning yet. I said to myself that I thought I should take a cold shower. Two seconds later, Claudius turns on the shower for me. Not all ghosts are evil. Mine is quite sweet, although he doesn't like men. At all. My godmother's friend, who I'll refer to as Jim, had a son about 10 years ago. Jim's father passed away about a year before the son was born, and the family always kept a picture of him on top of their TV in their living room. Jim's son, Timmy, looked at the picture quite frequently, but never asked who the man was. One day, Jim was on the second floor of his house, while Timmy, who was three or four years old at the time, was in the backyard on the patio near the family's in-ground pool. Jim told Jimmy never to go in the pool when he was alone, so Tim wasn't worried. Unfortunately, Jim suddenly heard a splash. Panicked, he raced down the stairs and just as he reaches the first floor, he hears the splashing stop. Fearing the worst, Jim steps out onto the patio. Surprisingly, Timmy was standing there, soaked but unharmed. Jim grabbed his son and dried him off and asked what had happened. Timmy replied simply by saying, I fell in the water, but then the man on top of the TV saved me. More awesome than scary. When I was about six or seven, I used to sleep in my parents' room. I would often kick my dad out of bed to sleep in the bed with my mum. I woke up in the middle of the night one night and something compelled me to walk back to my room. I looked at my dad and saw him sound asleep. Then I had this urge to look out the window. Now, my room faces the street and there's a street light that provides some light. I can also see the front porch from my window as well. Anyway, I saw a shadow of this boy just standing there on the front porch. It seemed like he was wearing 1930s attire with a newsboy cap. I'm staring at this shadow for a few minutes, really confused. So I go back to my parents' room thinking I've gone crazy. There was a nightlight in the room that faintly illuminated the room, just like the street lamp outside the house. I was already under the covers when I saw the same shadow of the boy next to my side of the bed. I couldn't see any facial features or anything. It was just a black shadow of this boy. I called out, hello, several times to this shadow, but it didn't respond. I eventually gave up and put the blanket over my head and snuggled closer to my mum and fell asleep. That's probably the creepiest thing that has ever happened to me. I grew up in a haunted house, so I have many of these stories. This house was located in the middle of the woods, creepy enough without the haunted part. It was moderately new, built in the 60s, with three stories and 5,000 square feet. One time we were all watching TV downstairs in the basement, basically just the ground level floor at the bottom of the house. 
The kitchen is just above the TV room and it's nearly 10 p.m. All of a sudden we hear what sounds like a man with work boots on stomping through the kitchen. We pause the movie and all look at each other like, oh no, not this again. My grandpa tells us to stay downstairs. He goes upstairs and returns about five minutes later. All the doors are locked, all the lights are off, there is no one in the house. We all just stare at each other like completely freaked out and resume watching the movie. When I was little I used to also see little black figures walking around the upstairs section of this house. We had this balcony that overlooked the library. That balcony connected to my grandparents' room. Their room connected to a bathroom and this bathroom connected to the sewing room. Sewing room connected to the staircase landing and that connected to the other side of the balcony. So it was all one big loop. That floor in itself was haunted as hell. When me and my sister used the bathroom, we went together in case something bad happened. One time we were in my grandparents' bedroom and she was peeing in the bathroom. I was standing next to the sink and saw something move out of the corner of my eye in the doorway. I looked and saw a black huge figure walking around the room. I started screaming, black thing, black thing. And my sister and me jumped up and ran through the sewing room towards the stairs. As we were running, we heard the black thing running through the bedroom and across the balcony. We could hear it running behind us as we went down the stairs. Then it stopped once we reached the kitchen. It was so crazy. My creepiest moment by far would be when my family moved into a small apartment after my parents decided to get a divorce. I was 18 and I shared a room with my mother. I let her have the twin bed while I slept on the floor. Every day while I was in the shower, I would hear a voice call to me saying, come on, and then my name, let's go out and play. Come get me. It sounded like a child, about five or six years old, was bouncing around the bathroom with his voice echoing. I always ignored it. After a few days, I told my mother about it. We are a Catholic family, and it took us a while to find our holy water, but we blessed the apartment. That night, as I lay on a thin mat on the floor, I felt a weight step onto it. My mother was asleep, my brother was in his room, and my dog was in his kennel, so it couldn't have been them. I was scared and pushed at it with my feet only to touch at the air. I felt movement like wind and it stayed in front of me. I turned onto my side and I felt the presence crouch down, knees bent, resting the balls of his feet. A freezing cold air brushed my face and with a sigh it said goodbye and left. I was terrified and never opened my eyes. When my mum was nine or ten, the family moved into a large Victorian three-storey house, with my mum having the top floor to herself. All good until a few weeks afterwards, my mum started to complain of seeing a strange man in the room. My grandma brushed this off, but my mum started acting up pretty bad. Grandma mentioned it to a neighbour, and this neighbour, who was an old lady, asked to have a word with my mum. Apparently, my mum was seeing a man rise up from the floorboards of her bed, and he had a noose around his neck. Turns out a guy had previously killed himself in that room through hanging and the description fitted. Grandma hears this from the old lady and they soon move down the street and my mum sees it once more but outside her bedroom, but then never saw it again. To top it off, a few weeks after they move out, a new couple takes residence. Within a few days they were seen moving all of their stuff out in the middle of the night. We guess they saw the weird stuff too. If you have a story for me to tell, send me a message on Instagram at Lukianovart. And of course, as always, thank you.